so for anyone who may not have caught my previous videos I'll just quickly bring you up to speed in terms of the civil suit between Robertson, Rodney and Upchurch. So there is now a playlist where I have gone through the actual civil suit including Ryan's responses to the civil suit. So you can go and look at that. I've gone through the entire document over a series of videos. Yesterday I put out another video bringing things up to date. So when I put out the list of videos that was looking at the civil suit, there was an offer on the table to settle. It was David Robertson and Daniel Rodney who had made an offer to settle and at that point in time there was no response but clearly the settlement was not accepted by Ryan he's decided to stand his ground so now it moves towards a trial so a trial date has been set for December of 2025 and there's a lot of hoops that they have to jump through beforehand until they can get to that point and I did explain a lot of that in a video yesterday but in this video I'm going to dig a little bit deeper and go through the two relevant documents that cover all that so you can get a clearer picture of what is ahead with this lawsuit before I start going through the documents, I just want to give another shout out to the people who supported me with the buy me a coffee and the super thanks and enabled me to finally replace my iPad because now I can go through these documents for you without needing to wear my glasses and squint trying to read the documents on an itty bitty phone screen. So it helps immensely. And of course there's also the added bonus of when I finish this video I don't have to try a multiple different things just to get it to save because on my phone my phone just didn't have the capacity for videos really so it was always a nightmare so thank you so very much to those people who did support me and help me to get over the mark to replace my iPad. You have no idea how much of a difference it's made for my video editing and I love you guys. So I'm going to start by looking at the first modified case management order. So pending before the court is the party's joint motion for modification of case management order and to continue to trial which for the reasons requested it is reluctantly granted in part as provided for below. Further after consultation with Chief Judge Campbell the trial set for August 12th 2025 is cancelled to be reset by separate order of the Chief of Chief Judge Campbell. And the footnote to this which sounds like they're getting into a little bit of trouble the parties are reminded that requests to modify the case management schedule and to continue the trial should not be included in a single motion. A motion to modify the case management schedule is for consideration by the magistrate judge, while a motion to continue the trial date is for consideration by the district judge, and the different relief should be requested in two separately filed motions. In granting the motion, the court notes that counsel for the parties were expressly directed during the initial case management conference held on November 6, 2023 to proceed promptly with written discovery and setting aside dates for depositions prior to the original discovery cutoff deadline of August 30, 2024. That instruction was memorialised in the initial case management order, docket 29 paragraph G. Other than the trial schedule of defendants counsel, 
which ostensibly allowed her three weeks of availability that she had not otherwise planned on, all the circumstances recited in the motion were known to the parties at the time they proposed the case management schedule set out in their joint proposed initial case management order, docket number 28, which was largely adopted by the court. The court is not impressed that the parties did not pay heed to the court's explicit instructions. Nevertheless, the court will grant the requested modifications, but with the admo admonition that any further non-compliance with the court's instructions and orders will be incre increasingly consequential. So it sounds like one or both sides have not actually followed through with orders that were made by the court. This is pissing off the judge. This is not going to bode well for the case. Um, whichever party is doing that is upsetting the judge. And I know that they are aiming for a, um, a jury trial, but should they decide for a summary judgment, it probably won't be a favourable one. That's my thoughts. Moving on. From the party's joint motion, docket number 39, and the current case management schedule and trial date, the case management schedule and plan is modified as provided for below. Point one. Case Resolution Plan and Joint Status Reports The deadline for the parties to file a joint notice of med mediation details is extended from September 20th of 2024 to January 31st of 2025. The deadline for the parties to complete mediation is extended from November 15th, 2024 to March 31st, 2025. A mediation report must be filed in accordance with Local Rule 16.05b and no later than two business days following mediation. All case resolution plan details and provisions must remain unchanged. So basically before anything else will proceed with the case, they have to do a mediation. And the deadline for that is March 31st and within two days of finishing the mediation, then they have to actually file a report with the court. So the court is still trying to resolve things without it going to trial. Section two, discovery. The deadline for the parties to complete all written discovery and depose all fact witnesses is extended to from August 30, 2024 to January 31st, 2025. Parties must promptly complete written discovery and must immediately confer about the number of days needed for depositions and set aside that number of dates on the parties and the attorney's calendars to be filled in with specific deponents as identified. Failure to set aside dates for depositions as instructed will be at the party's own potential peril as the court will not grant further extensions of the discovery deadline based on deposition scheduling conflicts without a showing that the parties followed the court's instructions and that the requested ex extension is due to some circumstance beyond the party's control. So, yeah, Daddy's not happy there. It sounds like they have been messing around quite a bit and it sounds like the judge is... He's had enough by the sounds of it. So he's making it pretty clear that they need to pull their thumb out and do what they're meant to do. Further, the parties are encouraged to utilise and stipulate to 
remote depositions or other discovery options under Fed RCP 29 that would facilitate expedious and cost effective discovery. So basically not expecting people to travel to Tennessee for just for um, depositions etc which makes sense when you're talking about two different areas then logically it is better to do it that way. The deadline for the parties to bring discovery disputes to the court's attention and to file all discovery related motions is extended from August 30, 2024 to January 31st, 2025, unless otherwise permitted. All other provisions for discovery, including for resolution of discovery disputes, remain unchanged. Section 3. Disclosure and depositions of experts. The deadline for plaintiffs to identify and disclose all expert witnesses and expert reports is extended from September 20, 2024 to February 28, 2025. The deadline for the defendant to identify and disclose all expert witnesses and expert reports is extended from October 31st, 2024 to March 31st, 2025. The deadline for the parties to complete expert depositions is extended from January 31st, 25 to June 10th, 2025. All other provisions for disclosure and deposition of experts remain unchanged. So the plaintiffs, because obviously they're the one leading the case, have till the end of February to disclose all their with expert witnesses and expert witness reports and then Upchurch has a month longer because obviously he has to respond to what witnesses they are putting forward so he needs time to be able to respond to their disclosure. So the footnote to that is the party's attention is directed to this modified deadline to complete expert depositions which the court has modified to conform to the modified deadline for motions for summary judgment as the two deadlines proposed in the party's joint motion were the same date. However, to the extent that the parties find it unnecessary for the two deadlines to correspond, they may file a motion to extend the deadline to complete expert depositions. So, he's saying that Basically, they've got to stick with their dates in far, as far as discovery, but that there is some leeway when it comes to the actual depositions if they need more time for the deposition that can be extended. Okay, paragraph 4 or section 4. Dispositive motions. The deadline for the parties to file motions for summary judgment is extended from January 1st, 2025 to June 10th, 2025. Responses to summary judgment motions must be filed within 28 day days of the filing of the response and optional replies may be filed within seven days of the filing of the reply. All other provisions for summary judgment motions, including responsive briefing page limits, restrictions on motions for partial summary judgment and directions for preparation of statements of undisputed material facts and responses remain changed. So in terms of summary judgment, what that is, is basically they can apply for the judge to make a, a judgment based on what they have put forward to the judge so basically based on depositions based on any documents they filed all that sort of thing the judge can go through all that and say were I to make a judgment on all this right now this is what my judgment would be 
Now, they don't have to accept a summary judgment. They can then either say, okay, yeah, we accept that judgment, we agree with that, let's go with that. Or they can say, no, we're not happy with this summary judgment. We want to negotiate on it. Or we just want to throw the whole thing away and go straight to a jury trial. So it's a chance to... If they're not going to mediate, it's a chance to just have the judge make a judgment straight out without the expense and bother of going to a full jury try trial. But they are not committed to that summary judgment. So it, it's, it's a type of negotiation. So looking at footnote 3... The party's attention is directed to this modified schedule for summary judgment motions, including the modified briefing schedule. Contrary to the statements in the party's joint motion, the proposed extended deadline of June 30, 2025 would not allow 120 days between the dispositive motion reply deadline and the proposed target trial date of November 2025. This calculation is generally explained to Council in detail during the initial case management conference. I'm not entirely certain of the significance of the 120 days, except that perhaps it is a requisite thing in terms of um, deadlines and beginning of trials. That may become more apparent when we look at the second document. Section 5, Other Case Management Deadlines and Provisions. All other scheduling or case management deadlines and provisions found in prior orders are not modified herein remain in full force and effect. Section 6, Estimated Trial Time and Target Trial Date. The jury trial of this action is expected to last approximately five to seven days. A new target trial date of no earlier than November 12th, 2025 would be accommodated by the modified case management schedule and is consistent with the party's request for a new trial in November 2025 and order setting new dates for trial and pre-trial conference and detailing the party's pre-trial obligations will be entered separately by Chief Judge Campbell. It is so ordered. There's a, another footnote here, footnote number four. The party's motion recites that the trial date is July 29, 2025, which was requested the requested target trial date. However, the trial date set by Chief Judge Campbell was August 12, 2025. See docket 31. Parties would be well served to ensure that the new trial date, whenever set by Chief Judge Campbell, is properly calendared. So it seems that they have once again been told off by the judge. It seems like they have made a few mistakes along the way and she's not so impressed with them. So in terms of the trial date, Basically, they've got three months after completion of depositions before the trial can start. And, of course, in that time, they can negotiate with a summary judgment. OK, so now we are moving on to the trial date. So this is an order. This case is set for jury trial on Tuesday, December 2nd, 2025, beginning at 9am, in courtroom 6B, Fred D. Thompson, United States Courthouse, Church Street, Nashville, Tennessee. Counsel for the parties shall appear for a pre-trial conference in this court on Monday, November 14th, 2025 at 10 a.m. All lawyers who will participate in the trial must attend the pre-trial conference. The cost of summoning, summoning the jury may be assessed against the parties if a settlement is reached 
after the Thursday immediately preceding trial. So this is basically saying that up until the Thursday before the jury trial starts, they may not be required or they won't be required to foot the bill for the jury. But if they suddenly decide at the last middle mi- at the last minute to make a settlement between the Thursday leading to the beginning of trial and the trial date, then they will be footing the bill for summoning a jury. Information exchanged but not filed. By November 10, 2025, the parties shall exchange copies of exhibits and make available for examination by any opposing party the original of all exhibits. The authenticity of exhibits should be stipulated to, if at all possible. By the same date, the parties shall exchange designations or portions of depositions that are to be read into evidence during the trial in accordance with the procedure set forth in Local Rule of Court 39.01. The parties should attempt to agree on additions to the designations necessary to put responses into context. There's a lot of babble just basically saying that they all need to be on the same page, basically. Pre-trial filing deadlines. Council shall file a joint proposed pre-trial order with the court by November 17, 2025. The pre-trial order shall contain a recitation that the pleadings are amended to conform to the pre-trial order and the pre-trial order supplants the pleadings. A statement for the basis for jurisdiction in this court. A short summary of the plaintiff's theory, no more than one page. A short summary of the defendant's theory, no more than one page. A statement of the issues, including a designation of which issues are for the jury and which are for the court. A succinct statement of the relief sought. A summary of any anticipated evidentiary disputes and an estimate of the anticipated length of trial. So most of that is in the documents that we've already looked at. They just want to want to know it's basically just basic housekeeping. They need to know the pleadings. Everything, everything needs to be up to date basically prior to the beginning of the trial. The parties shall also file with the court by November 17, 2025, the following. Joint proposed jury instructions and verdict forms as follows. Council shall exchange proposed jury instructions on the substantive law of this specific case and proposed verdict forms and confer to reach agreement. Therefore, Council shall jointly prepare and file a set of agreed, proposed, case-specific, substantive jury instructions and verdict forms. Each proposed jury instruction shall include citations to supporting authorities. Council shall separately file any disputed jury instructions on verdict forms. Each council shall email a word version of the jury instructions and proposed verdict forms to chambers. 2. Witness lists. Except for witnesses solely for impeachment in accordance with Fed uh, CFP 26A, exhibit lists except for documents solely for impeachment in accordance with Fed uh, CFP 26A, and any stipulations. So what they mean in terms of witnesses or documents for impeachment means that um, when they're in trial, if a witness comes up with something, then lawyers are allowed to then bring in a new witness to discredit that witness. So that is something that doesn't fall in the 
guidelines, obviously, in the deadlines, because that may be that they bring that person in as a last minute addition. So that is not covered by the deadlines because it is a, a different thing. Expert witnesses. Expert witness disclosures shall be made timely in accordance with local rule 39.01 the court follows the procedures regarding the presentation of expert testimony as set, set forth in Local Rule 39.01. A copy of the direct testimony of an expert witness other than a treating physician must be reduced to writing and filed and served upon opposing counsel no later than 3rd of November 2025. The court may exclude evidence or order other sanctions for violation of a duty or deadline to make or supplement expert witness disclosures and for failure file the direct, direct testimony of an expert witness by the stated deadline. Okay, I'm guessing this document was written by a court clerk on behalf of the judge. But even still, the poor literacy is a concern to me. So that paragraph is basically saying that there needs to be transcripts of everything that is said in testimony from like expert witnesses and that that has to be given to the opposing counsel no later than November 3rd. And it also is quite clear about if there's any violation of duty or failure to meet deadlines that then those things will probably quite likely be excluded from the trial so this is basically going back to where they have apparently been a little bit tardy with meeting timelines previously here they're just making it clear that if you don't meet the set timelines or if you don't do things the way that they are set out here in this order that the evidence may be excluded. Okay, before going on I'm going to look at what a motion in limine is. This also has come up in the Delphi case so for anyone following that this will also clarify things. So a motion in limine is a pretrial motion that seeks the exclusion of specific evidence or arguments from being pre presented during a trial. A motion in limine is decided by the judge outside the presence of the jury. The purpose of a motion of limine is to address potential prejudicial, irrelevant or inadmissible information that could unduly influence a jury or hinder the fair administration of justice. By filing a motion of limine, attorneys aim to prevent the opposing side from presenting evidence that could be highly emotional or legally problematic, thus avoiding any poten potential prejudice that could arise. Motions in limine are particularly valuable in cases where the mention of certain facts or information could take the proceedings and where the potential harm caused by their introduction might be irreparable. Motions in limine are often used to limit or exclude expert testimony under the Daubert standard. Such motions regarding expert witnesses are usually filed after the close of discovery with a hearing on the motion in limine held prior to trial. So basically it's those pre-trial motions where they look at things that could sway the jury unfairly, things that may basically favour one side or another, but in, in, in what is considered by the judge as an unfair way. So like Delphi at the moment, the the defence are trying to have all Richard Allen's um, 
admissions of guilt excluded from the trial, all 60 something of them, because I think that they are prejudicial. But we won't debate that right now because that's not what we're talking about here, but that's just an example. So, motions in limine and objections to experts. By November 10th, 2025, the party shall file any motions in limine and any motions objecting to expert testimony. All such motions shall comply with Local Rule 7.01. Any responses to such motions shall be filed by November 17th. So basically they have till the 10th to file any motions and then a week for the opposing side to file their objections or their responses. Discovery. Supplemental responses to interrogations, requests for production and requests for admissions shall be made timely in accordance with Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 26 and Local Rule 39. Objections to the use of a deposition at trial shall be made timely in accordance with Rule 39.01. The court may exclude evidence or order other sanctions for violation of a duty or deadline to make or supplement expert witness disclosures or discovery responses. So once again, basically meet the deadline or your staff will probably be excluded. And finally, pre-trial conference. Counsel should be prepared at the pre-trial conference to identify and discuss undisputed facts and issues, preview proposed testimony, discuss expert testimony, preview proposed exhibits, discuss motions in limine, discuss proposed jury instructions and verdict forms, discuss settlement and discuss pre-trial briefs. All pre-trial requirements and deadlines set forth in the local rules of court remain in effect unless specifically addressed above. It is so ordered. So that's the two documents that are the most recent documents in the case. It's basically setting out your deadlines for everything. So we're looking at possibly a civil trial on beginning on the 2nd of December next year. Now a note on that with the previous video that I did um, Upchurch made a comment under that video saying I won. So I had hoped I actually put a response under there you know Ryan e email me because as much as we all love Ryan, sometimes he's not always 100% serious. So I I considered like going, okay, well, no need to do this video now. But until I can be sure that he's not just pulling my leg or just, you know, just doing it to amuse himself, then, you know, I'm not going to make any comment further on that so Ryan if you're listening to this and you have closed this civil case congratulations if you haven't well we're just going to push on we're still going to keep looking at what's happening here because people are interested in what's going on anyway if you're not subscribed to my channel please subscribe hit the like button and leave a comment below.